My name is Jenna Wilson and I'm the Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of TIAA CREF. I was a um, graduate of both the Master's Program and the Bachelor's Program in Accountancy here. I was very fortunate to have been selected to work at uh, Deloitte's predecessor in Los Angeles, which at the time was one of the big eight firms, which is now one of the big four. Um, and it's interesting, I went to work in Los Angeles and from my class here, there were four other people from U of I that started in Los Angeles the same summer. So I stayed at Deloitte for a long time. I was there uh, 19 years. And I was an audit partner when I ultimately decided that I wanted to leave and uh, do something in the corporate world. So I went to the department head and said, I'm um, going to start looking for a job. I've worked in this area for all my career, so I can't really look for a job without you hearing about it. I might as well just tell you. Uh, and that was really very fortunate because then I had a lot more people helping me network into possibilities that uh, I could pursue for potential jobs. Ultimately, I ended up going to work for a large insurance company that was based in Los Angeles. And um, I went first into internal audit uh, and had responsibility for an audit team that did audits all around the globe. A uh, variety of insurance companies in uh, Taiwan, in a whole variety of different places. And um, after a relatively short period of time, I was asked if I would consider being the controller. And I said to myself, I don't really know very much about controllership, but sure, whatever. <laughs> so um, I had a great opportunity to learn an enormous number of things and to supervise a fixed staff of about 35 people at that point. Um, the company was ultimately acquired by a Dutch company, and the long-term prospects for my role were not very good. Uh, so I could either wait until they made the decision, or I could kind of make my own decision. And uh, at that point, MetLife was getting ready to become a public company, and they did, needed someone with exactly my skill set. So my husband and I had some extensive discussions about LA, New York, LA, New York, and we ultimately moved to New York. So I've been in the New York area for about 13 years, uh, worked at MetLife for four years after they went public, and uh, through a strange coincidence, uh, went to lunch with a very old friend who talked me into going to talk to another company about another position. And um, I said to myself, I'm not interested in that job, uh, but I thought I would at least hear what they had to say and ultimately went to work for a company that gave me enormous opportunity to expand sort of my field of interests. Um, and I ultimately became the chief financial officer of one of their spin-off companies in the hotel business. Now, you might think hotels has nothing to do with insurance, and you're right. So I stayed there for the first three years just to get the company up and running, and then uh, was fortunate enough to take a little bit of time off, and then joined TIA CREF about three and a, two and a half years ago. I'm responsible for a fairly broad set of activities, both traditional finance as well as some that might not ordinarily get sorted under the chief financial officer. So that includes the actuarial team, uh, which is a very, very important part of an insurance company. Uh, the other things that I have responsibility for are quite non-financial in nature. It includes physical security of our buildings, the cafeteria, janitorial staff, um, travel business, uh, all of the care and feeding of our physical sites, including leasing. Uh, and that's quite interesting because it, it brings me into a lot of conversations I would otherwise not get a chance to participate in. My sense when I went into accounting was that it was going to be a great launching point into a lot of different things because you use accounting at every company. Any kind of business has to have accounting skill in its uh, portfolio. And I really did not think I was going to stay in public accounting more than about the two years to get certified. And I ultimately realized that I loved it because I got to go to lots of different clients. I was learning new things all the time. Um, I got to travel some. I got to teach other people internally. Uh, so it was lots of fun. To me, if you're going to have any kind of exposure to the business world, uh, even if it's 
the business world of the school your kids go to, even if it's just you know sort of being involved in community activities, it's a good idea to understand accounting at a level that you can have a thoughtful conversation with others who are trying to run a commercial enterprise. Um, and I think ultimately, if you are expert in understanding how accounting works inside a company, it's like understanding the circulation of the business, that it's what connects all the different parts, whether it's sales, manufacturing, um, sort of keeping track of what investors care about. Uh, so it's actually a common language across many parts of the organization. It was pretty clear to me that there were lots of great opportunities that you could pursue both in the accounting firms and elsewhere uh, that would take you on lots of different paths over you know, a long period of time. And when I initially graduated, I was thinking maybe I would go back and study some more and maybe teach accounting or something else. Uh, and so even that to me seemed like a lot of optionality that other degrees might not offer as much of. My connection with the accounting profession right now is um, multifaceted. I obviously have responsibility for supervising a lot of folks who are professional accountants uh, in the controller shop and uh, a number of other areas. But the other big connection point I have with it is with our outside auditors, and I think they're under, undergoing a real challenging period in the profession uh, with the emerging points of view of the PCAOB, some of the changes in the rules that they want auditors to operate under. I think it's creating a lot of tension in some cases between sort of the people who are trying to do the accounting and the reporting the audit firms who are trying to do their very best job doing the audits, and then the PCAOB who's looking over their shoulders and making judgments about the quality of the work. And that does show up in my workplace from time to time. I have a very strong belief that um, the best managers care about the people they are leading and less about them being the leader. And so it is my hope uh, that I care about everybody in the organization I'm responsible for leading all the way out to the very newest interns who've just shown up on the floor, uh, to the people who are working in the cafeteria, and if they don't know that I care about them, then they are less likely to do their, their best job at work every day. The one thing I would tell you is you're going to a great school and you have great opportunities to make friends and colleagues and connect with folks who will be friends for life uh, and colleagues that you may run into and cross paths with over decades. So I would say first remember that this is the launching point for a very long life after college which for many of you could be 50 years and so you should be investing in all those relationships and trying to keep them current through whatever means are most appropriate for you, whether it's you know the clubs you belong to on campus, whether it's you know your social networking. But I'm still friends with the people I went to school here, and it's been many decades. So take advantage of the great opportunities you have here and make sure you continue to invest in them as you leave and as you stay, you know, sort of connected to the university going forward. The change in campus over the last several decades is just remarkable. Yeah. And I think it is a testament to how important land-grant universities are to the fabric of the United States business community and intellectual community. Um, and folks who grew up in places where the land-grant universities don't exist don't have the same understanding of how powerful the central school system in a state can be. Um, and I live in the Northeast now, and there are many hundreds of very good small schools, but it doesn't have nearly the impact on a state's economy that a school like this one does.